We're going to install a fiber pull FH55 heater on this pool in beautiful Mississippi. First, we look at the equipment, pump, the filter, salt water generator, and then we'll set up a location for the heater. And this is a plastic equipment pump and the power supply. This is a breaker, the upper one is for the pool pump, the lower one is dedicated for the heater. And as we look at the plumbing, we can see where the water is coming and going out. The, the heater will be before the salt water generator, after the filter. So we're going to cut the line here and then feed it to the heater. And we'll come back from the heater and tap back into this line. Here, we'll put our heater up here. The pad is 18 inch by 38 inch by 4 inch. You can use a plastic pad like this, or you can use two pieces of 16 by 16 by 4 inch thick concrete blocks. Basically, you need to put them right underneath these feet. The middle can be open. You need to have 12 inches all the way around and at least 36 inches in the front section here because this is a service panel and this is where the cold air blows out of the heater. Okay, when we open this accessory package on the FH55s, you have four anti-vibration pads and two drain adapters. And these are for condensation water and these are for vibration. Basically, the way these go, underneath each foot. The anti-vibration pads are not required in most municipalities, so they are mostly thrown away. But some municipalities require them, so we include those. These are drain adapters that go underneath the heater. They they direct the condensation water. Now I'm going to show you how to install them. Here, let's lay this down. Lay the heater on this side, and if you look underneath, there's one here right in the middle is basically snap in there one and the other one is in the far end two you can stick a piece of hose on it and just channel it and direct it anywhere you want on the fh55 model you have two on the smaller models you only have one drain hole okay now we're going to start assembly of the plumbing first we're going to assemble this three-way valve which is a control valve so it will allow some bypass through the system and some through the heater. Basically, in this plumbing, it's different for every plumbing, but in this plumbing, I'm going to remove this 90 and install this fiber pull three-way valve. We will start assembling with the valve. First, we clean all three parts of this valve with pipe cleaner acetone. Then we clean the pipes where it connects. Now our bypass valve is installed. These are two six inch pieces, which will go into the heater. No matter what you do, you have to use at least six inches of straight before you make any turns. And I cut these up already and we need to clean the outsides of them completely with pipe cleaner or acetone because sometimes when these pipes come out of the factory, they come out really, really glossy and then they slip from the gaskets. So by doing this, we take that sheen off the 
surface of it so it grabs onto the gaskets much much better just do it like this and let it dry out for about a minute then we will start using it okay now we will start assembling from the bottom which is the water in which will connect to our three-way valve and we'll put the gasket around it now that the primer's dried out and we we'll slide this on put it into position and tight. as tight as you can go by don't put wrench or anything don't exaggerate it just as tight as you can get with your hand and it's in there now we're going to come out of here and then we will go into the plumbing section Okay, now we install the intake, which is the return from the filter. And this is our bypass system. Um, we can let some of the water down here, some of the water into the heater, or we can block either one we want. And it comes down, it's the inside water in on the bottom. This one's done. Now we're going to connect the water outside, the top part, back into this return line here. Okay, before we put the upper pipe connection, just look in here. This is the flow sensor right here. So we don't want to put any excessive pressure on that. There's a lip here, it shouldn't go further. But sometimes if you have an angular cut on the pipe, it can rest on that. Just be careful, do not push it all the way in to block this thing, because this thing flips in and out to sense the water flow. Okay, you see, I put the gasket on and I'm going to slide it in, goes in, and the gasket stops. The distance here is roughly inch and a half, and that's plenty enough for it to grab onto. Um, we've connected the plumbing now. This is the bypass, which is the inlet. A three-way valve kind of works like a T. It directs flow as much as we want to in each um, rate. So right now it's a flow through, everything goes through and bypasses into the heater from the bottom. The water heats up, comes out through the top, goes back, taps into the same line. Um, we put everything before the salt water generator because we don't want this excessive chlorine going in there ruining the gaskets. The heater is salt water proof, it's chlorine proof, it's chemical proof, it's not a problem, but just gaskets wear out in time. So for that reason, we tap before these things. And this is the end of the plumbing. Okay, this is a ground rod. This is actually nine to 10 feet long. And we're driving this into the ground. We're going to bond the heater into the soil. Now the bonding, we have the bonding rod driven into the ground. It's a ground rod. It's about eight, nine feet long. This is a bonding lug which mounts onto this and accepts the wire. The other end of the wire will go into here. Just the bonding wire. As you see, it's connected back here on the heater. It just runs into this ground rod, clamps onto it. Total cost of materials is less than $20. It takes about 10 minutes to do it. And ideally, all pool equipment, the motors, pumps, everything needs to be bonded to the system. So if you don't have those, you can connect all of them into the same connection here. And if you need to, you can put more of these clamps in there, about three, four dollars a piece. You can just stack them on this. Now we're going to connect the electricals on this. Basically, we open the service panel, the four screws at the corner of it. the service panel and basically we will take the electricity through any one of these ports we have three ports here we will use only one the other ones for spare in case you put remote controllers and such on them so we will go through one of these come back up here connect one of the hot lines to l1 the other hot line to l2 and the ground to ground and that's all there is to install to this thing when putting these wires in 
be careful. This is the flow sensor connection here. It goes into this terminal here, water flow sensor. And if you knock these wires loose, it's going to give you an error. It's going to give you an error as if your pump is not pumping or the plumbing is blocked. So just after you put the wires together, double check, make sure this is connected and make sure these this red and white wire aren't pulled off or broken. Okay, let's do the electrical connection. And we run out a little conduit here. We popped off the built-in adapter. We just run the half inch conduit connection. And run our wire through it. L1 and L2. Since this is 220, they get one of the hot lines. It does not matter which line is which. It's just two hot lines. And what matters is the G, the ground, which must be ground. And on the opposite end on the wall, we have a typical 20 amp double pole breaker. That's all. It's two hot and ground goes to the ground. No neutral, no GFCI, none of that. Okay, our installation is complete. Here are bypass valve in which we can regulate how much water we put into the heater or how much we want to bypass. Basically, this is the little off section here, so we can shut off, shut off this area or the line for the heater, just either way we'd like to. Goes down. Um, the bottom is the cold in, top is the hot water out, and going back into the system. System is wired in. Um, on top is a pool pump, on the bottom is a pool heater, and most importantly, on the bottom is our bonding wire, which is number eight bare copper wire connected to a ground rod. Um, these parts are available at any hardware store for a total less than about $20. Okay, so now we start the system. Let's turn on our pool pump. Okay, and the water is coming from the pump, going through the filter, and our fiber pool bypass valve, the three-way valve, is stopping the water from going into the filter and sending everything back to the pool. So we want to send some water to the filter, so we move this off disk towards the line going towards the pool, so some water is coming through here, some water is bypassing, and water is circulating through. The pump pot is full of water, so let's go ahead and turn on our breaker. Turn it on. Let's look at to see what we have. There is 84 degrees, beautiful springtime in Mississippi. And let's look at set. Set one is the desired temperature. It's factory setting at 82, which is a pretty comfortable temperature. If you wait a few seconds, it'll revert back to normal. Now we're just gonna push on off button. The water's coming in at 77, going out at 77, because the heater is not yet running. It'll start about in 30 seconds and it will start blowing air from the fan and we will start getting reading slowly. Um, a good indication is this pressure gauge will start climbing up. It's at 1.5 MPA right now, megapascals, and it's going to climb to about two, it goes up about half. And this gauge is oil filled and there's a little air bubble. Um, some people are concerned that there's a crack or there's water leaking in there, none of those. It's actually air bubble in there for expansion purposes. As you can see now, once the compressor kicks in, this 1.5 will start climbing up. There we go. See it's climbing up. Now it's going to start creating heat, and these in and outs will start showing difference. Now we will go back to the bypass valve and see the functionality of it. At the moment, we're putting about 60% of the water through the heater and about 40% through the normal system. We can pinch it back a little bit, give about 30% to the heater and 70% bypassing. And the reason we can do that, there's a really good pump here. It's a good quality pump, so it should be a little push through. If your pump was not so strong, you would have to allow more through the heater and less through the bypass system. See, it's actually 2.3, which is really good. That means the air temperature is warm and humidity is high. And this in and out difference, here we go, and start registering. So once it gets to 82 degrees, the lower mic is shut off. Now remember, the heater will only run while your pool pump is on. If the pump is off, heater will say EE03. Here's an income. 
I've turned the pool pump off and look at the heater now. That's an error code, which means there's no water flow. So when you get this code, make sure you either close your bypass valve too, so much or your pool pump is not pumping, your filter is dirty, pump is plugged up, one of those things. So let's just go ahead and turn the pump back on. Pump is on. And this error will go away within about 45 seconds after your floor is established. There we go, floor is established. The fan came on already. It takes a few seconds after the fan for the compressor to come on. Our system pressure is down to 1.5, and once the compressor kicks in, as we know, that's going to climb up. Now, this 1.5 is very relative. It's warm day now. If it was like frigid winter, it may be below one, in fact. It's a very compressible gas in there, so it moves up and down. If you were in Arizona, maybe start up, it'd be two. So don't so much worry about what it is on the initial, just the difference from not running to running is what makes the difference. See the compressor now. In the FH55, there is a four minute delay in case of an error, in case of a malfunction, it resets itself for four minutes. So um, if the compressor doesn't come on right away, just take a break, sit back and give it four minutes, it will start back up. Four minutes should be up just about now and the compressor should be coming on shortly. Still working. It's a cute little pool on a lake in South Mississippi, about half a mile from the beach. It's a really, really nice place. Nice pool, super nice people. Very, very nice. It's Waveland, Mississippi.